Mao is released kidnapped Oriza magistrate. Maoists in Orissa state have freed a magistrate abducted earlier this month, the state government says. The release of R. Vinil Krishna was delayed for a few hours. The reason was that rebels had insisted that five Maoists due to have been freed in exchange from Mr. Krishna should be first handed over to them. The authorities insisted that they had not bowed down to the rebels' demands and Mr. Krishna was now being taken to district headquarters. India Coca-Cola compensation law is passed in Kerala. The southern Indian state of Kerala has passed a new law that will allow people to seek compensation from the soft drink giant Coca-Cola. The company is mired in controversy over its bundling operation in Palakkad district, which campaigners say has caused environmental damage. They say it has also led to a severe water shortage in the area. Coca-Cola's Indian subsidiary Hindustan Coca-Cola Beverages, HCCB, has rejected the charges. In a statement, it said it was disappointed with new legislation. The bill was devoid of facts, scientific data or any input from consideration given to HCCB, the statement said. At no time was HCCB offered an opportunity to present facts, engage in dialogue around this issue or share independent data before the bill was tabled or approved. Afghan suicide car bombing injures dozens. At least 24 people have been wounded in a suicide car bomb explosion in the southern Afghan province of Kandahar, police said. The attack occurred in Spin Boldak town of the Pakistan border. The injured included 16 civilians. The town is situated 110 kilometers from the provincial capital of Kandahar, which is a Taliban stronghold. In the past few weeks, there have been a wave of suicide attacks in Afghan cities, including the capital, Kabul. Our forces and personnel from the intelligence department were following the suicide attacker's car. Commander of the Afghan border police forces in Spain Boldak told the reporters. When he realized that he had no way of fleeing the area, he blew himself up, he said. One officer told the reporters that the attacker wanted to get into the district governor's office. Militants have attacked the Spin Boldak area many times in the past. At least 17 people were killed and 23 others were wounded last month in a suicide attack in a crowded public bathhouse in the town. Indian Commonwealth Games bosses are arrested. India's top investigating agency have arrested two senior Commonwealth Games officials suspected of corruption. Organizing Committee Secretary General Lalit Banot and other top official VK Verma has accused of financial irregularities linked to the Games. These are the most high-profile arrests in the ongoing investigation into allegations of corruption over the last year's showpiece event in Delhi. Both men deny the allegations. They will appear in court on Thursday. Sri Lanka World Cup song dropped for causing offense. Broadcasters in Sri Lanka have stopped playing a song back in the country in the Cricket World Cup over fears it might cause offense. The song was launched in January at a glittering event attended by national cricket captain Kumar Sangakara and cricket board officials. It was billed as the official national cheer for the team. But the lyrics sung by young pop star Lahiru Pereira reportedly upset President Rajapaksa. The World Cup finals, which began last Saturday, are being played in Sri Lanka, India and Bangladesh. Reports quoting presidential aide said President Rajapaksa was unhappy at tones in the song against competing authorities. I only try to include some humor as this song is to encourage the team. I did not want to insult anybody. 
He reportedly asked the state radio and television to stop broadcasting it. Private broadcasters told the reporters that they too have ceased airing the song. It has now been replaced with new songs sung by a veteran artist. Cameron Multiculturalism Speech Not Attack on Muslims David Cameron has insisted he was not singling out Muslims in a recent speech on multiculturalism. Mr. Cameron's call for to end state multiculturalism sparked debate around the world, with some accusing the UK Prime Minister of attacking Islam. Explaining his words to students in Qatar, he backed a multiracial society but not a super tolerant one in which people lived separate lives. Mr. Cameron, who is touring the Middle East, also spoke up for gay rights. We'll move on to the business world. Boeing wins contract to provide aerial tankers for U.S. Air Force. Aircraft manufacturer Boeing has won a lucrative contract to provide the U.S. with 179 aerial refueling tankers. Boeing and European rival EADS had been competing for almost a decade for the $35 billion U.S. Air Force contract. During that time, both the U.S. and the European Union have reported each other's companies to the WTO alleging illegal subsidies. And over the past decades, two previous attempts to choose contractor have failed. The U.S. Air Force is replacing its current fleet of KC-135 straight to tankers, tankers some of which date back to the 1950s. Now he adds has 10 more days to file a protest with the Government Accounting Office, GAO. The arm of Congress which deals with the federal contract disputes should it object to the decision. The GAO would then need to make a decision within 100 days. If it stands, the Boeing decision is good news for Washington State and Kansas where much of the tanker work will be done. Welcome to the world of science. Shuttle Discovery sets out on last voyage. The U.S. Shuttle Discovery has launched from the Kennedy Space Center for the last time. The orbiter rode into the bright blue Florida sky, leaving the pad at 1653 local time, 2153 GMT. Its 11-day mission will see it deliver a new storeroom and a sophisticated humanoid robot to the International Space Station ISS. Only two further flights remain by Endeavour and Atlantis, which NASA is trying to see concluded this year. The orbiter fleet is then expected to retire to museums. As usual, huge crowds are gathered on all the approach roads leading to the NASA facility on the beaches along Florida's space coast, everyone wanting to witness a piece of history. 
They all had to wait a little longer than expected. The final countdown was delayed by three minutes as a problem was fixed with a computer system that tracks the shuttle to orbit. As soon as the issue was resolved, ground controllers restarted the clock and called out to Discovery's crew, enjoy the ride. Shuttle Commander Steve Lindsay replied, we appreciate all your work and for those watching, get ready to witness the majesty and the power of Discovery as she lifts off on final time. Discovery is regarded as the leader of the fleet and was entrusted with both return to flight missions following Challenger and Columbia accidents. First launched in 1984, this is the 39th outing. When it lands back on Earth in nearly two weeks' time, it will have covered a cumulative carrier distance of 230 million kilometers, 143 million miles. That's further than the distance from Earth to the Sun, 149 million kilometers. And in sports! London 2012 Olympic Test Event Schedule Unveiled The major test events to be held at London 2012 venues such as Horse Guards Parade and Lawns Cricket Ground have been revealed by organizers. Beach Volleyball will take place at Horse Guards Parade this August with archery at Lawns in October as preparations intensify. The 2011 Badminton World Championships at Wembley's and a men's football qualifier in Coventry also feature. Some events will be officials only, but others will be open to spectators. The London 2012 Organising Committee said it wanted fans to be able to experience events in the Olympic venues before the Games begin. No test events are planned for the main stadium, aquatic centre and velodrome until next year. In May 2012, the best student athletes will be given a chance to test out the Olympic Stadium in Stratford when the British Universities and College Sports Championships are held at the centrepiece venue. And before we close today's bulletin of news analysis, let's have a recap of the main points. Gaddafi missing forces in Tripoli as rebellion spreads. In turnabout, U.S. says Marriage Act blocks gay rights. Obama seeks consensus over Libya. Agent Orange used to clear Canadian roads until 1980s. Saudi held on Texas terror charge. Angry World Cup cricket fans clash with police in Bangalore. And there we end today's bulletin of news analysis. Be with us in the coming weeks too. Thank you.